right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am joined by Meredith Alexander. How are you doing, Meredith? I'm doing fantastically. Great to be here. And where are you today, Meredith? I am actually in freezing Tampa, Florida. <laughs> Really? Tampa, Florida freezing? You don't hear that very often. It was 46 degrees this morning, which for us is, you know, a shockeroni when you go out with your shorts and little shirt and uh, make a quick yeah. turnaround. Uh, absolutely fantastic. And, um, you know, Meredith is, is a top life coach, uh, mindset life coach, and uh, you run the Grit Mindset Academy. Yes, which is fantastic. Indeed. And today we're going to talk about an interesting subject about what if those falling boulders are actually the secret to unleashing the epic you. And, uh, and some time back you wrote a book called The Sky's the Limit. Um, yes. And that was literally about boulders falling on your, your poor daughter, correct, Skylar? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. And it was interesting because uh, it was really the turning point in our lives, but not in a tragic sense by by any traditional means. Mm -hmm. So maybe just explain to people a little bit about, you know, what happened to Skylar and uh, how, that, how that changed your life and, how, and you, how that brought you to where you are today doing what you do. Sure, absolutely. So, um, you know, I had been one of those entrepreneurs who was chasing shiny objects and I was chasing mm -hmm. measurable outer game sort of things and I felt like I was always very, very busy, but not always getting the results that I wanted. Right. And then one Friday afternoon, I got the call that, you know, I think we all dread uh, mm -hmm. that my youngest daughter, who had just graduated from Yale, gone down to South America on a Yale fellowship to work with a native population, had literally taken a quick little jaunt down to Colombia. And on the day before she was supposed to leave, had been on a, an adventure expedition and a boulder just broke off the side of the mountain and came crashing down on her. And by all technical um, you know, precedent, mm -hmm. her injuries were too severe for her to survive. What, so I was told to drop everything that I was doing and to fly down to South America. So mm -hmm. uh, all of a sudden, all of my other little problems seemed very, very small at that point. Yeah. And when you jump on the plane, right, to head down to, to South America, right, um, I think, as you say, you had two choices, right? You had the choice to just collapse and let this all overwhelm right. you or whatever, or you had the choice to figure out how you could, you know, get yourself together and turn this around. Right. And, and see, this is where I really began to understand that um, sometimes it's the boulders in our lives that really hold the powerful gems for us. Because for me, there have been a couple of things in my life. I'd always been really interested in the inner game, how some mm -hmm. people just absolutely soared in the face of obstacles when the majority of people just felt like paralyzed and ostriches right. in the sand. So mm -hmm. I'd always kind of studied the inner game and, and, and what that meant and how that was possible. And so, and yet I'd had a few things in my life already that just felt impossible to feel grateful for and even impossible to forgive. And yet they had driven me to research even more how we find our resilience, how we find our grit, right? And so, yes, as I got on that plane, I realized that I, the, the worst of all the emotions that I was feeling was feeling powerless mm -hmm. and that this was totally unacceptable to me and nothing right. in the outer game uh, could I possibly control, nor could any of the little, the sales funnels or any of those things, those sure. could not help me at that mm -hmm. point. The only thing I had to hold on to that, that this crazy freaking inner game stuff that I had studied for decades was true. It either mm -hmm. was laws like they said it was, or, yeah. or it wasn't. And so I said, you know what, I may not be able to control the outer game, but I sure as heck can play a mean inner game. So game on. And so I began to apply little tiny bits by bits, the principles that I learned beginning with mm -hmm. asking myself some new questions. And the first one was, has anyone 
else ever achieved anything that people said was impossible? Right. And of course, the answer was yes, I was mm -hmm. flying in one of those things, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, and what I love there is just just to to underline it there is what you said is little by little, you started applying the principles, because I sometimes think that we, you know, we're all impatient, right? And yep. we live in this shortcut culture world where everything is instantaneous. And sometimes we, when we start on something, we expect massive change immediately. And when it doesn't happen, we give, we give up and say, well, that didn't work. Um, yes. But what you're talking about there is you had to take small steps and as you say apply different you know parts of the principles yes. one step at a time rather than just go well now i've yes. got the inner strength i'm just gonna I'm gonna blow everything apart. yes yes and to your point i mean this is uh, we hear a lot of people dropping the word mindset mm -hmm. and yeah. and i i i look at it almost in total frustration because often what a lot of people are equating with mindset is standing in front of a mirror and making an affirmation of, mm -hmm. I am a money magnet. Yeah, <laughs> I have yeah. $50,000 worth of bills, but I'm a money magnet. And that's the right mindset. I have to look on the bright side. And for me, what it became was when people would ask me, how can you always be looking on the bright side? My answer every single time was because I'm not looking on the bright side because think about it when you are trying to look on the bright side where is your focus really it's on this big looming dark side yes. so you are not focusing on what you believe is the bright side you are focusing on hoping to see the lack of the presence of this big looming dark side but but your your focus nevertheless you're feeding more of the dark side your mind has to authentically shift and buy in and to your point that starts with one tiny believable thing that can be mm -hmm. considered fact or truth in all right. capital letters and that's the path yeah and i think that's a very powerful message for people is that you have to look for that one one starting point so when you got down to south america and and to your daughter i understand you went through this process on the plane and everything but mm -hmm. it's one thing going through it in the abstract and it's another thing when you're faced with the reality in front of you so what was that moment like and how did you uh sort of maintain the 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 mindset that you had decided you were going to adopt you know, I, I must have asked my, myself that question about a million times because when I show, especially as I wanted to start teaching people how to find this mm -hmm. within themselves. And for me, the beautiful opportunity here was that there was so much at stake outside of myself. I right. had to do this, quote unquote, for lack of better word, accurately and correctly, for, because it's the only thing that I felt th that I could give my daughter, right? Mm -hmm. And so, but, and the beautiful thing is by inching myself up one little believable thought, and again, underscore a million times believable thought to my mind that I could get from total despair to a little bit of hope. Mm -hmm. And then from hope to a little bit of belief, but there's even a crack in belief, sure. right? And then, but from belief where there really was the breakthrough for me was that moment when I finally got to that place where my brain logically achieved this state that it was like this powerful knowing where it became an expectation. And at that point, I was no longer fighting against something I didn't believe. Mm. I was right. immersed into it. So when I arrived at that tiny little hospital, I was not this traumatized mother. I was there comforting the, the river rafting guides who had been mm. there and rescued her. I was right. comforting the young friend that she'd been with. I was even cheering on the doctor saying, you know, we, we are going to do this. And that was, and, and in that moment, John, the weirdest thing happened because finally for the first time in my life, I was able to look back at those things that I had not mm -hmm. been able to forgive, that I had not been able to feel grateful for, 
And it was just this huge aha moment for me that, oh my goodness, those had been tremendous gifts because right. they had allowed me to be able to stand in that moment in fully in my power, ready to authentically say game on. And it was, and it as crazy as it sounds, but it's documented in that book. Mm -hmm. It began to look as if life had to conform to that vision because we were so unwavering in our calm expectation and allowing the process to work its magic. Yeah, and I think there's a couple of things there that I just want to focus in on. Number one is, it's a, it's a strange paradox in many ways, isn't it? That you had to go deep inside yourself to find this. And then to make it actually happen, you had to go outside yourself. Yes, yes. And I love that you brought that up because too often when I'm working with clients now or when I'm listening to some of the banter that goes mm -hmm. on on the internet, people tend to hone in either on the outer game and extract mm -hmm. it or hone in on the inner game. And it's that magical choreography of the two yeah. overlapping and enhancing each other. And it's like that, you know, just the synergy of the two exploding and creating the super energy that independently, neither one of those can really get us where we want to go. We have to master, really master that inner game. And again, it's much more than saying, you know, believe that you can do this. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. great. How do I do that? Right? Yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. And the other thing I just pick up on there is you mentioned like things in the past or whatever, maybe. And I do think that sometimes when we take the moment out to look back and we look back maybe a little bit more dispassionately or with more clarity maybe is what you're talking about here is that's when we start to see wow we are actually a lot stronger than we thought we are mm -hmm. wow, we actually got through a lot more well wow, we learned lessons there and yes and and that awful you know the one that we always hate you know that some of your you know the people who are the worst to you are your greatest teachers and we always hate yes. to admit that but when you sometimes look back you go yes that was a moment that actually made a huge difference in my life that's such an important important point. I one of the big things that I, I that give some of the, the clients that I work with their biggest breakthroughs is to learn to embrace their boulders, i.e., the anti mentors, mm -hmm. because it's so important to have these powerful positive mentors in your life because they teach you all these great things and they encourage you mm -hmm. to follow their path and do these wonderful things. But we have a tendency sometime to go, you know what, I'm going to add a little bit of my sprinkle here and I'm going to change that just a little bit. And, you know, we kind of, we sure. mess with it a little bit, but when we're faced with the anti-mentors or the anti-mentor experiences, we get the message loud and clear. We're like, okay, I know what I do not want and I know what I need to be. I know I'm going to be strength. I'm going to be determination. I'm not going to let anyone else rip my dreams from me ever, ever, ever again. Yeah. Right? So we, the anti-mentors, though, that's the genius in the recipe here. I mean, it's wonderful. Don't get me wrong to have the moments that take our breath away. Yeah, yeah. But without those moments that knock the wind out of us, we're, our, we're flat. Right? Mm -hmm. We're flat as a species. Yeah. And we tend to, and the thing is those tend to be a lot more power. I mean, the good things that happens are the good advice you get and the great mentors and whatever. Yes, that sticks with you. You can draw on it, but it's those other things that tend to have that are more profound, maybe more visceral in many ways. And that's, and, and when you learn to use them as lessons, they become so much more powerful as a result. So true. So true. And those moments, those experiences, and when we, sometimes we need other eyes to help us mm -hmm. distill the, the gem value from them. But when we can distill that gem value, that becomes our superpower. That's mm -hmm. our greatness. That's, that's, you know, the place of combustion where we go, we dare to go into what's unfamiliar and mm -hmm. we, we dare to tackle much bigger dreams than we would have if we stayed in this 
strange, familiar place, which for some reason we call the comfort zone, because for most mm. people, it's far from comfortable. Yeah, yeah, it's not, com <laughs> it's not comfortable at all. So one of the things I want to pick up on, so when you went to the hospital, right, and you did probably what nobody expected there, right? They probably expected a traumatized mm -hmm. um, a mother from the U.S. to come in and be, be, but you went in and you said you were comforting, you were cheering on the doctors. How how much difference do you think that made to the doctors and the caregivers? The fact that I mean that must have kind of really changed their whole attitude and maybe given them the extra energy to go the extra mile. It it was really impactful, and again, we started seeing things that were medically impossible beginning the next morning. And so as a result of that, we were able to fly her within three days to Miami. And mm. that mindset was so impactful to the neuro team and the ICU where we ended up spending three months in the ICU right. um, with them that actually last year, they invited Skylar and me back to talk to their a team of 300 nurses and doctors wow. and everything about mindset because they hadn't seen anything quite at that level. And it, it really impacted the entire ICU during that time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that was what really made it become my mission. Right, yeah. John, because I realized that this far, this was not, coming from me. This was me uh, getting my brain out of my own way and relaxing mm -hmm. into this much bigger process, right? Trusting the process, trusting the right. laws of humankind, emphasis on kind. And, and mm -hmm. I learned that there are certain principles, certain pieces that when they could be put into place, they can create, they can take from something that's technically impossible and mm -hmm. transform it into a place where it's the new I'm possible. And so it became my passion and my mission to begin sharing that first on stages, even though initially mm. I had, I believed that I had terrible stage fright. So right. it was deciding whether I could get through that. And then people began to ask me if I could teach it because understand that not only had this boulder devastated my daughter, and then when she was released from the hospital, she was unable to sit up on her own, anything on her own. I became mm. instantly her 24 seven, which devastated my the business that I had at that time sure. so here so I was in a position where I ha had no experience being a caregiver mm -hmm. and where I had to figure out where our next dollar was going to come from so I began applying those same principles the the combination of the inner game and the outer game mm -hmm. and had a really fast trajectory with that as well and so people began asking me to teach it. And that's where it really became, well, maybe I can bring in a few clients, okay, then sure. a few more. And we started seeing the transformations there. And that's when it became just a powerful calling. It's like, this is important stuff that people need to know so that they too can feel like they're living, they're coming even more alive and mm -hmm. feeling that epic version of what's possible. And so how did, you, how did you sustain this during, I mean, because there's got to be periods of, I mean, like you said, you were three months in the ICU. There's got to be periods of despair sometimes. Resentment, right? I mean, because when things happen, sometimes we resent the fact that they happened. Even though, So how did, you, how did you manage to maintain and not like give in to some of these things that are completely natural? It's interesting. Um... I, I don't know. I'm, I, yes, there are definitely moments where, I guess to your earlier point, you wish that you were seeing kind of different results faster, mm -hmm. but words can't begin to explain the profound impact when, so the things that I had gone through previously, 
that were horrible. I mean, I'd been in an abusive marriage. I'd Mm -hmm. almost had my business devastated because people had basically lied to me. So I'd had some things that really were, Mm -hmm. if those things could turn around and be the gems and that the, the, the pinnacle puzzle piece yeah. in what had transpired with Skylar, who was I to say, oh, well, this particular moment sucks, right? right? Because what did I know what this was setting things up for? And so what I would really discipline, and I, and again, the word, the focus is discipline, right? Sometimes we have mm-hmm. to discipline and we have to realize that some of the garbage that goes through our mind is not unlike getting a song stuck in our mind. Yeah. And yet for some reason we give it complete credibility. We say, well, that's natural. I, I mm-hmm. am who I am. I uh, realize we get, we get to choose. We really do. We choose what we make it mean. And that was, huge to me and when I took ownership of that it made it much easier for me to more quickly go okay what's what is this doing for me what's what what's the secret here and Mm -hmm. do I need to know right now because if I looking back if I had known in those horrific moments that those moments would serve me I would have reacted differently right I would have felt less passionately so mm-hmm. I, it was critical that I was who I was in that moment, reacted exactly the way that I did in order for me to be where I was later at that moment with Skylar. So mm-hmm. in those moments where it, it got frustrating, yes, there are definitely moments. You know, I won't kid you. I mean, there are moments when, you know, even today I'll look at Skylar and she still can't do anything on her own. That balance, mm-hmm. that stupid boulder that I love so much that's brought so much to us mm. but ah, it 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 just the the secret of finding that balance has been so elusive but we're early yeah. on and and yeah. but and there are times when I look her friends getting married and getting jobs and doing all these amazing things that she was positioning herself to do yes of course there as a mom there's a part of me who who, you know, buys into our conditioning of this is what happiness looks like. But then there's another part of me that now more quickly will say, is that the only way that happiness can be defined? Is that the only way that happiness can show up? And And I I, I think that's, Right? Yeah, and I and I think that's such a it's such a powerful message because yeah, I mean I think sometimes we get caught up in these very narrow uh, definitions, as you say, of what success, what a happy life looks like, and yet there are examples all around us of people living lives more fulfilled than us who are doing things that are very much not out, or very much outside the norm, the so-called right. norm or whatever. Um, and I think I think what you touched on there is something where I, I think it's it's humility, right? I mean, I think sometimes we have to be humble enough about the fact that maybe we don't understand something, or maybe we're not, as I said, we're not able to just switch things overnight. That things have to happen over time, and we have to work through them. And I think that's a key part. <clears throat> There's obviously a whole level of humility involved in all of this as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And I think it's. Um in some way it's very freeing to let ourselves Mm. off the hook and go there's some things that we definitely have to take ownership of and a lot of that is between our ears Mm -hmm. right but if we're willing to take ownership of that one piece you know what's going on in our mind really and really start to master what are you focusing on i I mean one of the things that one of the little pieces i gave to my immersion coaching clients today was have a listen today, be really aware, hyper aware of when other people express where they are. Are they talking about where they are or where they aren't? Because most people Mm. will say, well, you know, things are pretty good over here, but what I'm really struggling with is this. And I just don't seem to be able to make progress here. And boy, I'm getting eaten alive here. And, and that is, such a difference about what you are creating and what you are believing Mm. is possible right and and also touching into so many people have this interesting belief that success 
is like that one side of the triangle. It just goes yeah. straight up, <laughs> yeah. right? And yeah, it'd be the, great if that was true. Oh, it would be, maybe. Although, think if oh, it maybe. just went yeah. straight up, you wouldn't have the blips that made you create, oh, let's go here, let's mm -hmm. try this. Oh, okay, a little bit of an eh, and then you're like, oh my gosh, wait, let's do this. And maybe mm -hmm. even when you have a little blip, you might even ask someone else and tap into their genius. So all of a sudden you have two geniuses working on something. So it becomes even better. So it's, you know, how are you defining the way something must look yeah. and who you are in the context of that picture? That to me is a really important question. Because I think sometimes we get hung up on destinations, right? We start on a, pa yep. on a path and we feel that it should lead to a particular destination. And I've certainly found in my life, and this is my philosophy now, is that sometimes paths just lead to other paths that lead to other paths that lead to destinations. <clears throat> and so therefore, nothing is ever really, you know, when you look back, nothing is a mistake or you say, oh, I shouldn't have done that or I shouldn't have gone here or done this, mm. whatever, because it was a path leading somewhere. And you wouldn't be where you are today. And sometimes I think that's what you've got to look at. And, and people get too hung up on everything, as you said, it being a straight line, you know, success being one straight line. I'm going to get here and then you go straight there. No, you don't. You go totally. on a meandering path. <laughs> <laughs> totally. And how many times have you said, if X happens, then I'll be successful. Yeah, then yeah. I'll be happy. Then I will. And as opposed to one of the big lessons in all of this for Skylar and me is that if if for us the destination is Skylar quote unquote I'm going to use a, a an analogy very purposely but, mm -hmm. but wait until things get back to normal mm -hmm. in order to celebrating and feeling happy we might be waiting forever for yeah, that okay. instead imagine setting these tiny little finish lines for yourself yeah. and being able to celebrate a thousand or a million victories before you get to whatever your destination <laughs> ends up being instead of waiting for 10 or 15 years to celebrate one freaking destination for 15 <laughs> minutes until you're like gosh i thought i would have thought that would have been a yeah. little more exciting <laughs> yeah. and maybe and also maybe celebrate the small defeats you get too and see what yes. lessons you learn from them and so if you celebrate little victories little defeats i mean suddenly now you're you're taking a more expansive view of your life yes i love that i love that because the defeats are you know again those are the anti-mentors yes yeah and, they are and are and, they really and the very Exactly. Yes. At the end of the day. Listen, Meredith, it's been fantastic. Before we finish up, though, please do give us a little update on how Skylar is doing. You know, we, we continue to get to get little steps for little feet. Um, mm. it, she's so much further along than where she was four and a half years ago. Uh, mm. It's exciting. And we, uh, you know, we every every day is a new day. And she stays she stays joyous through this this entire adventure and uh it's you know it's just amazing and, and an honor to to be along for the ride with her as her mom you know yeah wow um it's some powerful stuff and i really do think that there's a great message in here for people and to be honest right now maybe the pandemic's your bolder i don't know maybe there's a lot of other stuff going on but i will say that you're probably never going to get a better chance than now to do a little bit of self-discovery, a little bit of self-awareness work. Look at things like the Grit Mindset Academy. You know, do yourself a favor now. Give yourself the gift of the best rest of your life. And, yes. and I think that the message that Meredith has shared this morning, um, I think it is a very powerful one that you should take on board. Listen, all of Meredith's information will be below this video. But before we go, Meredith, do, please do tell people a little bit more about the Academy and what you do. Absolutely. And so what we really do, I like to say that I'm in the business of helping people come even more alive and transform their mm -hmm. lives in the process. And in a nutshell, it's time for clarity. It's time to live an epic version of yourself and to really, for once and for all, identify and then I obliterate what that next big step means to you. And then get out of your own way, identify, reboot, and unleash, and let nothing, much less yourself, stop you. So 
I'm here to help you identify what that path might be. Uh, John has generously allowed me to even offer a gift, uh, mm -hmm. which is a 20 minute strategy, find your powerful future now session. 20 minutes will, I will help you lay out, see what some of those strategies that next big step might be for you. And you can uh, just uh, go ahead and, and connect with me by going to bitly.com forward slash power future. And that's all going to be in the program notes. But um, whether you work with someone like me or some of the other amazing coaches and um, resources out there, even Einstein has said that you cannot solve the problem with the same mind that created it. So give yourself that gift, speed up time, get off the hamster wheel and go out there and, and find that missing piece for you. Yeah, I, I love it. I love it. And I really do. And I would totally endorse that. We all need, we all need help and advice and we all need a something outside of our, our everyday experience to give us a different perspective. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, John. This has been amazing to yeah. have this conversation with you and, and thank you to all your listeners for, you know, you're cheering us all on and your support. All right, thank you. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine Pipeliner CRM. See you all again soon. Thank you.